Sonny, you've been running away from the truth for so long. How long will you keep running? We're about to get slapped with some truth. Welcome back to Amori as we play through the Higakamori route. We are at the church area of Black Space, which always sounds lovely to say. Flower crown it has been preserved by the cold. You want to pick it up? Sure. <laughs> what else is gonna happen? Black space just never ceases to be unsettling. But a lot of this, I don't know whether it was different or not. Oh, thank goodness you're here, Amori. I thought I was going to be stuck here forever. <laughs> I mean, you are in a dream, but you do you? It's very much Basil being like tied up by his own something. And I mean, I guess what is different about this compared to what we saw in reality, is the fact that at this point we can know for sure that this is all how Sonny sees Basil. Like, this is Sonny's perception of how he sees Basil. Sonny sees Basil being tied down by his own trauma. Which is different, especially because Sonny hasn't really seen Basil in three or four years! You know, if Sonny has been staying in his house for three or four years, he doesn't know how Basil is doing. And this is probably one of those things where it's it's a certain assumption based on how we're doing. Like, if we are struggling, we might assume that someone else is struggling in the same way. So, if Sonny is having a hard time with the trauma of what happened with his sister, he's probably going to assume that Basil is also struggling. Just because, like, we just assume that other people who've gone through experiences similar to what we've gone through are going to feel the same feelings. So it makes sense to me that Sunny would assume that Basil would be struggling with this the same way that he is. Hence why Sunny perceives Basil to have his own something. Can't believe you came here to save me. I missed you so much. Oh, I'm so worried. What's gonna happen? Oh, buddy, you got your flower crown back! Oh. Who are you? Stranger. These are like the shadow basils. Sonny, you've been running away from the truth for so long. How long will you keep running? We're about to get slapped with some truth. I won't let this cycle repeat itself. So, like, the colorful basil is the one that we want to have in our lives, and the shadow basil is the one who, like, hits us with the truth that we're not ready for. I won't let you leave me, Sonny. Ugh. Not again. Oh! Well... We've seen that face before. Wait, this is Sunny. Sunny, little buddy. You're here, not Amori. It's so like the, tr the, the shock of the truth made it so it's not Amori here anymore. It's Sunny. Sunny. And it's, I imagine also the shock of hearing your name. Everybody else who's talked about Sunny has talked about like, oh, the dreamer. Or Amori, right? If you won't face the truth, then face me. Ha <laughs> ha! Face the suffering you've caused for the people you love. So, like, the stranger isn't really, like, hitting with us with the truth anymore. The stranger is just repeating some negative thoughts that Sunny is struggling with. It reminds me a lot of that fight between... Amori and Sunny, where Amori was saying so many negative thoughts that Sunny probably experienced or probably was still having. Pain of knowing what you've lost and the hatred 
of yourself for being too cowardly to change anything about it. Sonny is doing his best. That That isn't cowardly. But our negative thoughts will take that. It's the same actual action. It's like, our negative thoughts are like, how can we make this sound like the worst thing possible? Let those feelings devour you here. Tell your insides rot. I don't think that sounds great. Just saying, stranger. Or like, stranger danger. Like, <laughs> but the hard part about this is that when we've had negative thoughts for so long, or even our entire lives, because sometimes that happens, we don't even see them as negative thoughts. We just see them as thoughts. They're just, they're just normal. And when we see a thought as normal, we're not going to do anything to change it. Why would we sit here and think to ourselves, let me change my stinking thinking when we don't realize that our thoughts aren't helping us? We don't realize that these are negative thoughts and we see them as just thoughts. We are not going to actively work to change them. If we label anything as normal, we don't work to change it because we don't, we don't, why, like, why put in the time, energy, and effort to change something that we see as normal? Sunny has been struggling with these thoughts for three or four years about something that is incredibly scary and incredibly traumatic. And he has such a difficult time being kind with himself about what happened, which is part of like why trauma gets so stuck in our head. That is an inherent part of trauma is that it is so difficult to have that kind of compassion or to see it in a different way. And these negative thoughts get stuck. And we see these negative thoughts as the only logical conclusion. And that is something that makes all of this incredibly difficult, too. Is that we just have a hard time seeing that there is another way to look at the situation. And there is. Even though it is incredibly difficult to see it as realistic, or it is incredibly difficult to see it as true, there is another way to look at the situation. That's some lovely imagery, though. I think Sunny is the only character that we actually see afraid to. What will Sunny do? So we have all of our real world skills from facing our fears. Because as we as people grow and change and develop throughout our entire lives, it's kind of like we pick up these skills along the way, right? We can calm down. That'll take away the fear. Oh my god. That can stop. I would love it. You tried to calm down, but your lungs fought to breathe. It's like we're panicking. I would love it, though, if all it would take... I was just thinking this before before this happened. I would love it if all it would take was just like one deep breath, like one of those belly breaths, and then like, boom, our fear is gone. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Oh my god, I would love that. And then as I'm thinking that, I just hadn't gotten it out of my mouth hole yet. Ironically, the game is like, we thought of that, not how it's going to work right now. You try to calm down, but your lungs, lungs fought to breathe. So like, the fear is so overwhelming that it's like past our ability to cope. We don't have enough coping. Uh, like coping is not a habit for us. And therefore it's not something that we can like realistically do right now when we're this, this heightened, you know, once we get up to a certain level of, of fear, I guess to use these terms, um, our, our fight, flight or freeze kicks in and we just care about surviving in that moment. Cause anxiety is, where we are feeling as though like we're in actual danger, even though in our modern world, for a great deal of us, we are not in actual danger. You know, not turning in a work report in on time or a school thing in on time. It's not actual danger, but we perceive it that way, which is why anxiety um, impacts our body the way it does, though we are in actual danger. And I think something that we don't recognize very often is the fact that coping skills are very much that. They are a skill. So the more we do it, the easier it gets. And if we haven't been practicing that, like Sunny hasn't been practicing it, it's it's not going to work as well. We stumble through it. It just doesn't help as much because it's a skill like anything else. I We don't look at people who play basketball and say, oh, well, you tried it once and it didn't work out for you. Therefore, you're never going to be good at it. We recognize in our society that other skills take time and effort and practice. But we have a hard time with coping skills with seeing it that way. Sunny, all these times that I've reached out to you. Why didn't you answer? Well, because 
you are tied to something deep and dark and scary that Sunny's not ready to deal with. So we can't do calm down because we're having an anxiety attack, a panic attack. The dream is supposed to be safe for us. And then to have this shit like hit us like a train in this safe dream, I imagine is fucking terrifying. So we can try focus or we can try persist. I have a feeling that we're just like going to run through this and this is basically a scripted sequence. You tried to focus, but nausea overwhelmed you. You promised me that we'd face this together. Oh, you left me all alone. So if that is what happened, if if Sunny promised Basil that like they would face it together, this isn't real Basil accusing Sunny of this. This is Sunny blaming himself for not being there for Basil because this is all in the dream world. Oh, sorry. I thought I hit attack, attack. I meant to hit skill. So we're going to persist. The, and these, like, fear eyeballs keep becoming darker and darker. But the stranger's eyes are still visible. You tried to persist, but you couldn't hold steady. This is heartbreaking. I don't have any skills. Our attacks did nothing. We can't face it together. Then what? <laughs> At least we can be together here. That doesn't sound great. Like, that has implications that I don't like. Can I run? No, I can't run. Okay, so this is very much a scripted sequence. Sunny? I'll trap you down here with me forever. No fucking thank you. I would love it if Sonny could get out and make that decision to see his friends and just like veer off this course into a good ending. But no, this is what we're doing. Oh, <gasps> you strangled Sonny? That's not so does that mean that Sonny perceives the consequences of not supporting his friend as though his friend will like actually attack him and have that strong of feelings for him? <sighs> Hello, black space, my old friend. This is a very long thing that we're just... Oh. We... So this is all scripted. Buddy. See the hand thrown again? It's gonna be entirely different. Oh, this is... I don't think the eye fear lines were around us when this happened. I think this is like the and and I think last time it was a Mori who was climbing up the steps because it was almost like a very confident Amori climbing the steps, being like, "Yes, red hands, yes, you can be my step stool," like that kind of a thing. This is more fearful and scary. Oh, because we're just climbing the stairs that we're most scared of. Are we crawling? Are we crawling up the stairs that we're fucking terrified of while we're having like a panic attack in our dream? Oh. oh, well, there's Amori. That's the Amori that I was thinking of that's like sitting on his hand throne with his red hands. That's, that's, that was the image that was stuck in my brain. Oh, this is what the rest of it looks like. I couldn't see past the fear. Don't kick Sunny downstairs. Maury, don't. Sunny has worked hard to get here. Oh. It's like a Maury took over. So a Maury took over for Sunny as like a way to protect him. It's like this is overwhelming and scary for you. You're having an, an anxiety attack. You're having a panic attack probably at this point. 
because of this idea of like f- even somewhat facing the concept of the truth. So like, let me take over. I will come down from my little throne to help you. Um, and the stranger sees this and is like, oh, so this is what you've chosen to do, right? So you've chosen to live that way. I wonder, can you really call that living? You say some really, like, painful jabs there, stranger. Which inherently means that these are still thoughts that Sonny has about himself. Like, these are still, this is still a reflection of his own negative thinking. Which also makes it ironic that, that he, that, like, Amori is the protective figure then. Because Amori said some of the same fucking shit about Sonny. It's an interesting protective figure then. Leave me here. There's no hope left for me. It's always hope. Even though we don't always see it that way. Hi, buddy. A little tentative hand come up. It's like a dog being like, is now a good time for pets? Am I a good boy? Amori, Amori, wake up! There's light coming from the ceiling. Do you think it's a way out? Didn't we just wake up last time? After black space? Amori, you're so heavy. That's... What is happening? Come on, up the stairs you go. <laughs> That's a whole thing. After black space last time, didn't we just... like, wake up? Hmm. Well, now that you're done fighting the stranger, which is uh, no way associated with me, Basil, um, now I'm going to help you because you brought me my flower crown and help me from the stranger. Amori! So now that you've come back from a slightly deeper part of yourself, um, back to the slightly higher part of yourself, um, now we can talk in this church. Oh, is it a church? Because is that... Did Mari have a funeral in a church? Hmm. Phew, thank goodness you're awake. Are you hurt at all? I was trying to pull you towards the white light at the top of the staircase. Aren't you not supposed to go to the light? Isn't that kind of the trope? I get a really nice and warm feeling from it. Let's go up together! Fantastic. Well, what's down here? Nothing. Oh, nothing. Okay. Well, but I'm the dreamer, can't I just... Now the hands are friendly. Now that, now that we're like, now that Amori has saved us, uh, the fuck? <laughs> okay. We're in some uncharted territory here, Basil. I have no idea what to tell you. Is that a hand? Are those hands like they're dinosaur heads peeking up from the fog? Oh, that's creepy shit. Basil, let's get out of here. Those... This looks like black space. It's like... It's like Amori came down and saved us. And now we're just going to take the hands and float above the other parts of black space. That's what I'm picturing. Except I don't remember that background with the hands. I mean, these hands. Yes, but not those hands. It's weird and I have to specify which hands I'm talking about. Some of this, it's like, I don't know if I prefer it with the background or without a background. Oh, this is like the water. This is when like Mari's distorted face with their like, blah. It actually would have been funny if she made that sound effect when she appeared. Or more terrifying. And now we're in. Music doesn't fit when this actually appeared. 
This is like, what, the outer world? It's all just slightly off. Can we go faster? <laughs> Can we just zoom through this part that is not quite right, that has a little bit of uncanny valley? There is something about... Children going to sleep in an uncanny valley type of situation that is inherently terrifying. And not like terrifying as in like, I would be afraid for my safety. Terrifying as in like, I would be afraid for their safety. Like a don't go into a white van kind of afraid for their safety. I don't think that's inherently what's going on because we're within the dreams of a child. It's just not great. Oh, the light bulb. Oh, the yellow cat. The yellow cat actually fucking talks. I don't remember that. I could just be not remembering. Sleep, little one. But he wasn't the yellow cat. The dreamer's favorite. It's the sunny's favorite. The one who always looks over. There's a light bulb here, though. Sleep, little one. You are safe with me. So we went from something super fucking terrifying in black space where all the traumatic kind of anything associated with trauma and anxiety all that scary shit that we're trying to inherently avoid and then we just rode the little red hands not rode walked on like it's a little like yellow brick road red hand road all the way up to our favorite little protective big yellow cat so we walked on that red hand road up to safety this is like, this feels like something built into this, like, dream world. Mm. Sleep, little one, you are safe with me. That's fantastic and all, but I'm gonna sleep. Oh, why are you sparkling? Yeah, no, I, I get that. I'm, I want to click on things. Flowers for everyone. Oh. oh, it's all of their flowers from the, from Basil stuff. Cal is just fucking snoring. Does not surprise me. Is Mari here too? I'll always be there to protect you, little. Oh, it's the melody. But almost like it comes from a music box. Who wants a group hug? <laughs> There's a movie on TV. Four girls are performing a rock song for a festival. Also, there's nothing underneath the stairs. So inherently, how could the bad things get to them if they, if there's no stairs? There's no red hands. Three. Let's go on an adventure, Mori. Just the two of us. We can rest now, Mori. All our friends are here. What? <laughs> Rochelle is gonna be in this nightmare or this dream inside of our dream. Are we gonna wake up? Otherwise, we're getting into a lot of like inception stuff. Oh shit, one day left. Isn't that like the end? How you feeling, Sunny? Oh! You... you have a friend with you, Sunny. You have a new... and a new message. Hey, Sunny, it's Mommy. Hey, Mommy, that's weird to say. Uh, it's Sunny and something. That's like a weird 80s TV show. Like, it could be the title of that. Tomorrow is the big day! <laughs> The movers will be here first thing tomorrow morning. I gave them the keys, so don't freak out if you see them. Oh shit, this is like the last day. Remember to finish organizing your things today. I'll be picking you up in my car out front. Will you? Just go outside and you're ready. Okay, that's it for now. Mommy loves you. Bye, Annie. Okay, you're not following me. You look at your to-do list. Today your chores. Organizing your old belongings. No, I want to explore. You're just... 
You just plop yourself in wherever you're going to see fit and stay there. So after being shown in our dreams more about our trauma than we were ready for, now the trauma is very, like, we feel like it's haunting us. I guess that's how I'm seeing this. It, it is something that we can't get out of our head. Maybe, like, we're ruminating on it. it it's showing up as intrusive thoughts. It's something that we just feel is following us around everywhere. We can't unsee it. We can't get rid of it. Wait. I was like, you're wearing the wrong clothes, but that's not it. That's a Mori. Every other time we've looked in the mirror, we've seen Sunny. And I had to actually look at the clothes for a second to make sure. You're not wearing, like, the khaki pants, shorts, and the vest, or whatever it is you're wearing. You see fucking Amori in the mirror. Like, your sense of reality is not quite there anymore. Yeah, let's brush our teeth. Sure. Why not? Amori's teeth? Sunny's teeth? Oof. So then this begs the question. We're seeing Amori in the mirror because we want to escape from our trauma so badly that we have essentially created a whole new version of ourselves that doesn't have the trauma. And we would much rather live that life than our own life. Because that would mean escaping from our trauma. I'm trying to think of like what this would look like represented in reality. That's what comes to mind. Still nothing. Can we go into the piano room? No, we can't. I just want to explore the house before I just do my chores. It is unsettling when you're like right on top of me though something. If you could just like chill the fuck out, that'd be real nice. <laughs> Every time. Oh, I expected the something to move. Ugh, every time. It's it's very unsettling something. Well, I guess we're not going outside, so... Towards. Organize your old belongings. Sure. Uh... Okay. This box is for toys. Okay. Box is for books. This box is for trash. Well, that should be easy to sort. Where did I get? Picked up a single puzzle piece. Well, that's trash. It's just one puzzle piece. It's not my toys, so I am comfortable throwing them away. What did we get? Old small pinwheel. Like, is that trash? No. I don't know what you consider a toy that's subjective. Old broken kite. Sure, that's trash. I guess it's broken. What did we get? Old metal jacks and balls. Uh, that's a toy. You can still play with it. A guide to our- this one is easy. It is in the title. It's a book. Bag of marbles. Again, that- I guess, like, almost all of this could be a toy, especially in the eyes of a child, so, like, what is a toy versus what is trash? I don't know. A pig of the kidna's kite book. It's a book. That- that part's the easy one. The books are the easy ones. Toy car remote. Well, if it's just the remote, it's probably trash. I also think it's funny how we're going through toys that seem like they are... I guess not funny. Maybe accurate. Toys where, like, we ha obviously have a computer and our own phone on our desk. So we have, we have the technology to quote a show that is significantly older than me. And... Yet yeah, the toys that we're sorting are like a kite and like they're they're toys that usually I guess I would think of for kids that are younger than Sunny. So outdoor toy. Which is why I'm kind of like, well, can we just throw probably a significant amount of these away? 
But I don't want to make that decision for you. That is very much your decision to make. Old sprout marble. Sure. Because, like, I also notice a lot of these keep saying old. Like, old marbles and old this and old that. So, it these strike me as toys that, like, Sunny used to play with. Maybe now he just plays computer all day. I don't know. A pen cap. Well, okay, well, I, I know what to do with that one. What do we get? Old sweetheart doll. Well, it's probably a toy? I don't know. I guess the pinwheel could have been a toy, too. Old Hungry Humphrey book. I think it's funny about how so many of these characters are, like, based on Sunny's real-life stuff, like Humphrey and, um, Sweetheart. How many toys do you have in here? Rainbow Xylophone. Or Boy, if it still works. Oh, sorry. Yes, that box is for toys. Roll toy car. <laughs> Does that go with the remote that I threw away? Mm, hope not. Old smelly sock. Ew. I mean, I suppose it could be washed, but... What do we have now? Orange... Yeah, Orange. Orange Joe's Scratch and Sniff book. Well, that, that's a book. Which is that? It's a car. Or cash register, not car register. Car register would be a diff very different toy. Toy Old mini toy piano. Not a little mini violin. Kind of go together. Old building blocks. Duets for piano and violin book. Hmm. Wonder if that's a book. I I I can see a lot of this being triggering too, because like, huh? Why would we have that book? Oh, why would we have the mini piano, right? And going through. Objects from our past can be like that. We sit here and we think of memories um, that are associated with those objects. We think of um, the people that gave us those things, just like the times when we used it. All of that stuff. There's a lot of emotions that can come with the things that we have, which is why I sit here going, whether or not it's a toy is subjective. I don't want to make that decision for someone because it feels like I'm saying I'm determining the emotions that someone would have. Except for like something that can't be used anymore, like dry molding clay. Can of orange show. But that's why going through our stuff can be so difficult. Like there's just so many emotions that get tied in with it. The food pyramid book. Is it? I don't even think it's a food pyramid anymore. Granted, I, I, like, at the time this is set, it was, but I don't think it's a food pyramid. I think it's a plate. Unless it's been changed since then, too. That rock strategy. Makes sense. This is a big box. Of stuff. Like, just the most miscellaneous fucking stuff. Thank god there's nothing. <sighs> you sorted through your belongings! Equip. There's still a few things out of place, but that should be good enough for now. Well, okay, look. The pinwheel, I thought it was trash. But whatever. Every time you are right on top of me, it's extremely unsettling. Apparently, Sunny agrees with me. I don't, I can see why you don't feel like doing your chores right now. What are we doing? Are you gonna faint again, buddy? Don't put you near the bed so you fall on the bed. Protect your head. Let's do it this way. So at least if you you either fall on the wall and then slide your way down, or the wardrobe again, you slide your way down, or the bed. I don't know if we're actually gonna faint. Is this like the 
scare of like having this something following us is finally catching up with us. And then the glaring white of Amori staring back at us. Do I just have to go to bed? Oh, it is evening. Don't rush at me something. I just had that thought of, what if this something just, like, rushed me right when I made the decision to go to bed? That's unsettling. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Because we're going to sleep. The something didn't rush me. That's a lot of relief that I felt just now. Sunny may not feel that way. <laughs> that was a prime example of our imaginations being worse than what actually happened. Speaking for me, not sunny situation. White space is the comfort. Oh. I was thinking that in so many ways, until it it Everything explodes. Amori is just the... It's the protective figure, but Amori... But Sunny just vanished. It wasn't like the, like when they meet foreheads. It was... It was almost like... You're gone. Like, if this is too overwhelming, I can take over forever kind of a uh, disappearance. I don't know if that's the case. But I don't like that. Light bulb hangs from the ceiling. Whatever it is, look into the light bulb. No, because I want to look around first. Sketchbook. Take a look inside. Yeah. Are these the same? Am I waiting for something to happen? I don't know. I guess I am. You're different. New. Intriguing. Anything new on the laptop? That's different. Okay, what are you? Oh, I learned red hands. We can stab ourselves. Skills. What was I looking at? Skills. Red, ha red hands. Deals big damage four times. Cost 75. Jeez. How much juice do you think I have? And now I'm gonna look it up. Oh, pings from the ceiling, whatever it is. Look for the light bulb? Sure. <laughs> Love darkness, my old friend. It's pitch black inside, you can't see a thing. Hello, black space, apparently. What happens if I just take this option? Don't. Mind the content warnings. Because Sunny took over, right? Like, I guess that's my assumption. Sunny was taking over before. So would we have essentially... We're waking up in the middle of the night. Would... <sighs> this something... Would this still be Amori? And not Sunny? Because that, that kind of like takeover, I guess, was happening before... Don't jump scare. Um, before I went to sleep. Still Amori. I expected this something to be behind me. Not gonna lie. Oh. You don't even acknowledge that there's nothing there. Interesting. I'm clicking on it and no, no text is popping up. 
Oh, that's fucking creepy. I just got chills. Hi, Mari. Remnants of Mari? Memory of Mari. Thought I heard a sound, but maybe I'm just creeped out and I'm imagining it. It's easy to do when you have something following you and you just saw the hair on the ground like that. <sighs> What's gonna be at the staircase now? Okay, so what now? Excuse me, something. Back to bed? Hmm, it's basal something. Which is, I guess, still are something. But we see it about around Basil. I, I just expected something different to happen. How many times can I go in this cycle? Out of a morbid curiosity. Oh, I hate the sound. The sound is not great. Should we just keep waking up in the middle of the night? I did say it was a morbid curiosity. Wow. Okay. So the game wants us to go through the door first, I'm assuming. It's interesting that we just have the ability to go back and forth as many times as we want. You're not as creepy the second time around. Like, it's been less than a minute. It's kind of like the other something. Well, we've been exposed to it. it kind of loses power. There's a whole therapy built around. My door. Yeah, sure. Open it. Why, why not? Uh. Hi, Amori. We were hoping that you'd come by soon. Want to play cards with us? We were just about to start another game. Oh, whoops. Never mind. Oh, man, what the heck, Aubrey? You messed up all the cards. I was winning, too. Hey there, Kel. There's no need to be angry. It's just a game, after all. Don't give me that, hero. You only say that because you were losing. Isn't this, like, the beginning of the game? Are we just... Are we just repeating ourselves? Kel is always picking on me. Doesn't he have anything better to do? One day, I'm gonna pour life jam all over his hair and see how he likes it. This is very weird. So... Can't leave without your friends. But I can go back to white space without my friends. You may be wondering what's going on here. Pretty great question, I don't know half the time. But in this particular moment and in this particular video, I seem to be under the impression that if I do the same thing over and over again, I'll get a different result. And by that, I mean if I leave white space, you know what I mean, again and again, uh, maybe I'll get a different ending. It's not great. Sunny suffers the consequences of my choices and actions, and you and I get to sit through watching so I'm sorry about that. Okay, bye. I think this is a record for how many times I've done this in the movie. It's still nighttime. So... Do I just go back and repeat it? The game did imply earlier on that we were repeating things. Ah. You know, like the third time Basil something appears. Definitely not as creepy. 
Because this, like, otherwise, there has to be something that I'm missing. Because otherwise it feels like you could just play Headspace, the Headspace part of the game, infinitely. I don't think that's right. I don't think you're supposed to be able to do that. Maybe I collect my friends. Pokemon. Mori, I just want to thank you for being my best friend. In return, here's a present from me to you. Did you spit on me? Now you spit in your hand too. No, thank you. It's a brother's handshake. No, thank you. No, thank you. If you shake my hand now, then I'll dub you my honorary brother. <sighs> you shook Kel's wet hand. Ew. Ew. <laughs> Exactly. Woohoo! That settles it. Now we're destined to be bros forever. Ew. And that makes Hero your honorary brother now, too. Oops. What's up, Amori? We've been waiting for you. Cal and Aubrey have been fighting a lot again. You would think that they'd get tired of it after a while, but they're both just so full of energy. Okay, okay. so I can't... I can't leave. I can't... So did you want to head out soon? Oh, yes. All right, everyone, let's go. Oh, okay. I get a lot. It really is just repeating. 6,000. Damn. What is going on? Oh my god. But nobody else is here. Mari, Basil. I read that with more of a confused tone than I'm sure uh, Aubrey would have said it with. Oh, hello, Aubrey. Hello, everyone. How are you doing today? Confused. Kel's being mean to me again. Oh, oh no, not again. Did he have you shake a wet hand too? How could he? With pleasure. I'm not being mean. Aubrey's just all whiny. Well, Kel, you've just made a very convincing point. Now I don't know who to believe. <clears throat> believe me. No, believe me. Wow. Uh, settle down, you two. Why does it always have to be like this? <laughs> Chin up, hero. Look at you being all responsible. I really like that about you. <laughs> uh -huh, come on, Mari. Not now. <laughs> it's not flirt in front of the kids. <laughs> oh, hero, you know, I'm just teasing. You're so cute when you get all flustered. Mm. What are we doing? Do you want to show us your photo album now, Basil? Fuck. Oh, okay. But it's nothing amazing. Oh, Basil, stop doubting yourself. I'm sure they'll be great. You're right, Aubrey. Sorry. I'll try to believe in myself more. Here. This way we can all see. What? We've seen these. These photos are all so charming, Basil. You really know how to capture the moment. I didn't read the descriptions because I assumed they were the same. Thanks. I didn't take all of them, though. Mari likes to steal my camera sometimes. Only sometimes. When I look through these photos, I feel so lucky to have friends like you. Before I met you all, I only knew what it was like to be alone. But you've all taught me so much how to care for others and how to care for myself, too. Oh, Basil, you're so sweet. We all feel the same way about you. Yeah, we do anything for each other. No matter what happens, we've got each other's backs. This very much, like this feels like the repetition to keep Sunny safe that the game has hinted at earlier. I guess it brings it to a whole new level though with this idea of like Amori bringing it to the real world though. It's like, oh, you need protection in the real world too. I'll take care of that too. But now it's also in the dream world. So then where does Sunny and an Amori begin? Oh, that's confusing. Oh, I'm feeling group hug coming. You know what, Hero? You're right. I think I do too. It feels like they've also made this like super, super cheesy. Or maybe I'm just imagining it because I know it's in Headspace. A group hug right now. I'll start. Don't leave Mari. Don't leave me and Mari out of this. Come on, you too, Amori. Get in close, everyone. Because like there's the, there's that uncanny valley of knowing that everybody else in the playground is gone. It's a cute moment, 
just strange and weird. Potentially this also because I tried to stab myself three times before that. Just to make something happen? Uh, no, that would have been a good photo. It's okay, we don't always need a picture. It's not just about the memories, it's about us. I know that we'll all be friends for a really long time. <laughs> we'll always be together, like one big happy family. Aw, you guys really are the best. <laughs> I'll cherish you all forever. What is happening? Oh, uh, hey, Amori. Thanks. Thanks for always being there for me. Here's something I made for you. You got a flower crunch. Hope it fits okay. I always adjust it if it doesn't. There's no one here. I mean, we're here. I don't like this. <sighs> who's the- who's this? Oh, Dino Dig. Dino Dig. Ugh. Oh. That's different. That's different, that's different, that's different, that's different. Back to white space. Yeah! Four times the charm. There were footprints! I'm sorry, Amori. The sound is awful. Really? I... Oh. Oh! I for sure saw that this time. That was for realsies. This is the first time we've gone to the piano room. There's no piano. There was a piano before. There was... <laughs> I was thinking, there definitely was a piano! It's like, why can't I walk through it? There's nothing here. Here. <laughs> Okay, Amori. You know, Amori does a very good job protecting Sunny, even from real life things that are incredibly scary. Like this. The yep. I can't tell if it's an eyeball or like a blood moon. An eerie red glow radiates from outside. You feel strangely drawn to it. Black space? Let's not. Let's say we did. Oh, that's like the corrupted Amori. That's a more. Oh, don't come towards me. I can't back away. I can't move. Please stop. Uh, that sound that you may be hearing is the sound of me finally hitting the joystick on my controller. Door. Cool. I'm going to check the fridge. Still don't like that something being on top of me. Thought I got used to it, and then I didn't when other unsettling things happened. Oh, how do we look in the mirror? I bet we Fantastic. Nope, still look the same. With cleaner teeth. Nine out of ten dentists agree. That's some fucking hair. That's grudge style. I don't like it. Tomorrow, you'll be moving away. What would you like to do? Sleep until morning. I've done enough damage in white space. <clears throat> There's, there is a lot in white space. Shit. That's the most defined we've seen Mari close to our bed. Oh. <gasps> <sighs> It's like, we don't see Mari as this comforting figure if we haven't worked through our trauma. If we haven't worked through our trauma, we just see all the anxiety and the fear that comes with the avoidance. But if we start even just like starting to take those steps to work through our trauma, we can see more of the forgiveness 
and more of the kind side that came with Mari. It's not all scary. Even though it can be hard to see that if we haven't taken those steps to start working through the Hey, Sunny, it's Mommy. I'm waiting for you outside, so just come out when you're ready. Mommy loves you. Bye, honey. Okay. I'm sure nothing bad will happen. Who is in the mirror? Amori, of course. Of course. Right? Uh, uh, are these the movers? I thought it was the mover, but it shows up as the stranger. Interesting. So does that mean Amori sees all people as the stranger? Oh. We are moving very slowly. This feels like other news. So, what does that mean? This is the same as the other. Does that mean Sire? It's basically still dead. Suicide. Sad. But we didn't even know our friend was struggling. This route. Okay, well, let's go back and choose the other option. Let's go back to Mari's hair. It's so foreboding. That's what we just had every single time I tried to like go there and then come back and then go there and come back. Cause like, it wasn't making sense. Okay, so, like, one more time. Fit time's a charm. Ah, uh, it's terrible every time. So, like, turning to white space is full and returning to white space. All right. Well, this is a good place to stop. I've technically got an ending. Not a great one. I don't think there are great endings in this game. Um, but we can explore headspace more. I don't know how much more. When I think about this route, um, there might be a different ending. Uh, like, after you explore um, Headspace more and then come back. Because that's what it took to trigger this. But, if you think about this route overall, um, there's a lot of the stuff that's the same. But a lot of the stuff that teaches you about why all of this happened, why all of this is meaningful, is missing. And that, to me, feels sad, in a way. Like, we have these characters who are in pain in so many different ways. And we don't ever really learn why, because so much of that type of character development, that that learning that happens isn't it is like in the town, isn't in our house. And I don't want to say that, like, staying in our house or, or Hikikomori, I don't want to say that, that is inherently bad. But with with how this game and the narrative is set up, it's it that when, within this world. It feels sad just because we don't learn why. We don't learn why Mari is so um, impactful. We don't learn about the impact that she made on other people. We don't learn about why some of those statements from the characters are so sad. Like when they're all like, we'll be friends forever. Like we don't learn why 
even that may be something that Sonny may be desperately wanting, and hence why he may have put that in the headspace. There's so much pain that is shown in this game. In a very visual way, in a way that I think it is easy to look at and empathize with these characters. We may not all relate to their situation, but I think that sometimes it is because of the way that the game shows mental health and anxiety and trauma overall, those overall concepts in a very visual way, there may be moments when it's really easy to even relate to them. Not potentially the situation, but relate to them. And I think that it is easier to have those moments on the other, like the other route, like the, the true route, however we kind of talk about it, just because we know more about what's happening. However, there may be times when this route is actually something that feels more relatable because we don't always know what's going on with us. I don't know how many times I've asked people like, you know, how do you feel? A very therapy cliche. I'll own that. And people might say, I don't know. And that, that sometimes society looks at that and it's like, oh, people are avoiding or they're being dishonest. I, and like, I don't think so. Like, we honestly don't always know shit about ourselves. And that's fine. That's okay. There's so much safety that comes from being able to be at a place in our lives where we can just say, I don't know. And have that be okay. But I guess what I'm saying is that if we feel like we don't know how we're feeling or we don't know why we're feeling that way, there may be times in this route that we relate to it because it is confusing. We, maybe we relate to that. But I am going to stop here for now. I want to explore more of the white space stuff, um, see if there are any other things that I just like inherently haven't checked out yet and just go from here. <laughs> There's, if there's an entire other game thing with, with Headspace, there's a lot potentially there, but we'll find out at another time. <laughs> I would love to hear your thoughts on the game and the video, and I'll see you next time.